Welcome to another biker service run by the Christian Motorcyclist Association from Whitby. Jan, our chairwoman, led the service. So yeah, so, you know, as I say, I just feel that it's so wonderful to know that, that God is with us and God is guiding us. And even though things are scary, and I don't know about you, but when 
God wants, or God says so much here, the first thing I want to do is basically go in the opposite direction. You know, I'll just tell us, but when something's right, you just get that wonderful feeling, don't you? You know that it's there, and it's just really just inside you, and it's just wonderful. And you also know that when it is something God wants you to do, then it will work. You know, and it may take time, and but it will work, and I think that's what's so wonderful, really. Hi, yeah. <laughs> good to see you. So I've sort of mixed myself up here, really, because I turned two pages. It's so bad. Shows I'm not used to doing this, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. So. What we'll do is we'll just do this prayer and then I'll go to the first page, which actually is fine, that doesn't matter. <laughs> so I would just like us to pray. Father God, I know that this prayer is not easy, but Lord, please give us the strength to say, Lord, I will go where you want me to go and I will do what you want me to do in your holy name. Once asked the question, how can you be a baker and a Christian? Some of you have probably come across the same question. How can you become a baker and a Christian? And it, the answer is why not? Why not? For some reason, the, in some people's eyes, the two would be in complete conflict. Well, it's true that I just bad people a long, long time ago, and it seems to carry on through that now. We start to break down the barriers, but the, the barriers are still there. You see, it's a really bad idea to say you take people. Uh, and that is in any walk of life. It's not just bikers, you know, it's anybody we meet. Because the old age, you know, the, as human beings, we're very, very good at judging people. And that's what we speak of today. It's not judging people. Accept people as they are. Don't judge them. But we all tend to do it. You see, we sometimes judge people that we meet in the street as they're coming towards us, we've got a judgment of them. Or somebody we're seeing on television that we'll never ever meet. But we judge them, we have an opinion on them. Now, I'm going to go to a place um, a long time ago now, when I was, when I was first more excited. Um, and it's, it's an old adage of being thrown out of better places than this. And that was quite true in them days. I am being thrown out of some good places, but I'm, usually I'm not an aggressive person, so it was nothing to do with the way I behaved, it was just, I didn't want to be in them places, which is really. I could never miss them out of the house of Parliament, but never mind. <laughs> so, uh, I remember calling me a pub with, with uh, my girlfriend, who was then, she on the back of the bike, um, and she's not my wife, long-suffering wife, I must admit, but before we got through the door, the door opened, I thought, oh, and she had a smoke over there, door freeze. But what actually happened was the bartender came up and said, uh, um, We don't accept your folks, that sort of folks again. And I said, You don't know where I am. He said, No, it doesn't matter. He said, You know, we just don't accept bikers in here. And I said, That's fair. So we stood outside and looked a bit lovingly and thinking, That's very strange. But anyway, we found somewhere else. But the thing is, apparently, long haired people in leather jackets weren't accepted. Um, you won't believe that, but. Things change your life, don't they? You know what I mean? I mean, one day I had hair and the next day I didn't. It was very strange. So I decided to go for a walk and never came back. Um, but, oh, but yeah, apparently long hair and the jackets were accepted in that particular thing. He was looking for a, a better quality of clientele, possibly. But that didn't matter, you see. My leathers at the time probably cost more than his suit. My bike outside was probably more expensive than a, than a family car. I mean, I do buy him a second hand, really. But, you know, you get the idea. He, he stereotyped us as being rowdy people, as troublemakers, as problematic. But we all sometimes do it, don't we? I won't ask you to put your hands up for the people that's happened to them already. You know, there you go, you see. There's one, you know, there's two, there's three or four, you know, and that's what happens. But you don't have to be a biker to have that. These things happen. 
and it's no, it's no fault of our own. I say, as, as a race, we simply fail the judgmental people, really um, judgmental. You see, I'll tell you, when I first joined CMA, there was a guy in there, um, I never remember his name, never remember his name. It was, it was a Finnish guy, quite, quite slightly built, but he was covered from top to, top to toe, literally, um, a show, I never checked. But he had tattoos from the top of his head, to his toes, completely in touch, in um, uh, leopard skin print, everywhere, face, neck, shoulders, arms, legs, everything. Um, and uh, soon, that will put you straight off. You know, you got me, I'm sure about that. I'm sure about tattoos, especially in that, you know, concentration. Now, we found it very strange that, because this guy was really making that. He, he'd had a checkered past, but he'd come to know the Lord, and the Lord had changed him. And he was now a pillar of society, you better expect. He was a lovely, lovely guy. You see, you can see, I've got a tattoo down, but oh, I can take mine off. <laughs> I couldn't stand the pain, so I would never have done you know. But anyway, then there was another guy. We were in a, an AGM um, in Birmingham. And the, the days of CMA, when I used to go quite regularly to the, the AGMs, you would take a sleeping bag, you'd take a roll, and you'd sleep in a church, church hall or whatever was available. And one, we we'd got there a bit later on the night, we'd had a meal, and I settled down. I found a fantastic radiator. You know, a big iron radiator. And it was on a night, that was amazingly more, so I put me in bed by the side of the, the radiator. Come on, it was fantastic. I'm going to sleep, absolutely burned. In the morning, the sun was coming through. And I thought, what a fantastic place, lovely and quiet. But then the light disappeared, and in front of me was a bear. And that's all I can call this guy. He was a bear. He was huge. He's about, because I saw him very well, he follows me quite regularly. Maybe 6'2", six, 6'4", six, maybe a little bit taller, 18 stone, ex-forces, a big guy. And I thought, I've never seen him before. What sort of a guy is he, you know? And he said, no, Paul. I said, yeah. He said, I brought you a cup of tea. <laughs> but for everybody from the outside seeing that guy, they go, wow, that jacket, be all as big as that, you know. That is a fearsome guy. Gentle, gentle. God had changed his life so, so much. But I'm going to tell you that today you are all worthy people. You are all loved by God in a very special way. And this is a love which is completely different to the love we normally see in this world. You see, it's not the love of the movie industry which is all gooey and that sort of thing. The Hebrew word, uh, the Hebrew and the Greek, Greek nations have separate words for love. I'm going on down here because I'm being my boat. It's strange. I can remember a lot of things, but I still need notes just to, to chuck back on. Then, for instance, the, the love uh, of a father or a mother for their children is a particular uh, word. The love a husband has for a wife is another word. But there's two words that come to us being Christians, and they are the words of the love of God. And they are which is in Hebrew, or the, or the Greek word is agape. Now these words are only used for the love of God for his people. Nothing else is specifically for that. See, many great things are written in the Bible about what God thinks about all his people. I'm going back now to the beginning of the Bible, the book of Genesis, the first book in the Bible. It describes how God created the heaven and the earth. He sorted the light out, he sorted the water out, he sorted the land out. He gave dry land, he gave plants, he gave trees, he gave fish in the sea. Then he stood back and looked. If you read, if you read the, the Bible, it tells you this. He stood back and looked. And he says, he saw that it was good. And then when it was good, so this is the great thing about what God does for us. Repeat that again. When the earth was good enough, he created man. And only when it was good enough. And that's how much he thinks about you and me. He created 
created Adam, and the, the name means humanity, and he created Eve, which means living. But he only created them two people, and the earth was good enough to accept humanity, and that's your name. See, everybody looks at you, and you'll, you'll read the, the school will tell you that the earth was created in this way. But you go back to Genesis, and it tells you how the world was created. And then, strangely enough, the scientists totally agree with that. They look at it and say, yeah, that's actually how it did come to be. But the land is in it. It was good enough, but then it brought us into it. You see, we are very, very special to him. And to be special in God's eyes, to say, I'll give you the awakening that we are good enough. Good enough for this world. And what's even better, the Bible says, so God created man in his own image. Not only was the world good enough for him, uh, for us, we, he actually created, it, created us in his image. So we are the image of God. So you sport folks that are special. Male and female are special in the eyes of God. And to matter what this world says about you, reject you like I've been rejected over the years, you know, for being a motorcyclist in this case. But God knows that you are special people because he can look into your heart. You see, you folks are that special and the bonuses we look like our creator. And that puts a smile on my face every time I read about it. So I'll leave you with this thought. If God thinks we are special, how can we as humans, created in God's image, how can we judge others? And more so, how can we be judged by others? So, never beat yourself up what people say. Never beat yourself up what people do. Because 